The establishment and the legacy media are certain that there are Nazis and fascists everywhere, particularly when people oppose their agenda. But they're also willing to applaud and fund actual Nazis. Does this mean that we live in a truly nihilistic time with no truthful moral center in any of our establishment institutions? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.6 .6 million awakening wonders. Wherever you are watching, we are grateful to have your views. As you know now, we are primarily available over on Rumble. Join us there when you can. Surely you have noticed that terms like Nazi and fascist are used profligately to describe anyone who opposes the agenda of the establishment. And yet we find curious contradictions when we look at the funding of the ongoing war. We find peculiar and Anomalies when an actual Nazi is applauded in Canadian Parliament when Zelensky recently visited. Does this mean that terms like Nazi and fascist have lost their tethering, have lost their root, have lost their grounding because we live in a kind of nihilistic time where language is used in order to create narratives that are beneficial and to shut down opposition? Are we able to have honest moral conversations about righteousness and justice anymore anyway? Who has true moral authority? Who do we look to now to determine what is right, what is wrong, what is just and unjust? A few examples of this from recent times, of course, are the profligate and sometimes casual use of terms like Nazi and fascist, with establishment politicians willing to label their opponents as fascists and Nazis simply as a means to shut them down. Let's have a look at those terms now, because if you fund actual explicit Nazis in the ongoing war. That's not to say that the Ukrainian cause is not just or that Ukrainians are more broadly Nazi. Of course it isn't. It's just a reference to the actual Nazi battalion that are funded as a result of this war and the complexities of this war. And let's have a look at this extraordinary incident where a real life, genuine, actual swastika wearing Nazi was applauded on the eve of Yom Kippur and ask where is moral authority now and how are we all suffering as a result of the loss of this genuine moral center? I remember as a as a young student, you know, trying to figure out how did people get basically um, drawn in by Hitler? How did that happen? And I'd watch newsreels and I'd see this guy standing up there ranting and raving and people shouting and raising their arms. I thought, what's happened to these people? Why did they believe that? Well, some of them are in Canada being applauded in Parliament. You saw the rally in Ohio the other night. Trump is there ranting and raving for uh, more than an hour, and you have these rows of young men with their arms raised. I thought, what is going on? Okay, so there's an obvious attempt to equate supporters of Trump with Nazis, a literal, apparent and observable attempt to do just that. Now put aside your own preferences for a moment and think about what the meaning of Nazism is in a contemporary context. Does it mean fascism? Does it mean genocidal policies? Does it mean racism? Certainly any Nazi worthy of the term would have to be racist and genocidal, I would say, as a bare minimum. How is it that this term continues to be used and what is the function of this term? Is it simply to shut down conversation? Is it to delegitimize opposition? Because if the term Nazi can be applied indiscriminately or at least conveniently, don't we have to look at Nazi that are declared explicit and obvious and inconvenient Nazis that might be funded by the very establishment they're attempting to use that term to shut down conversation. So there is a uh, real pressure and I think I think it is fair to say we're in a struggle between democracy and autocracy. Now of course Hillary Clinton stands for a particular type of neoliberalist politics that ultimately supports the same financial interests that were ultimately in charge during the Bush-Cheney era and yet uses the rhetoric of progressivism when it's convenient. Another political figure that is aligned with those ideals but also I would argue and let me know in the chat in the comments if you agree quite oppressive when it comes to protest and free speech. Take for example the Canadian trucker movement is Justin Trudeau. I suppose what we're proposing here is there is the rhetoric of liberalism and freedom and yet the behaviour of authoritarianism. Certainly we are not accusing people that we disagree with ideologically of being Nazis because that is the kind of simplistic reductive discourse that we need to move beyond. What we're pointing out is there doesn't seem to be any moral centre in any of our establishment institutions whether that's the media, the government, the corporate world 
or the judiciary that allows us to freely trust their moral position. That's why you have people that support their opponents dismissed as Nazis and actual Nazis, as in this clip, applauded in Parliament. Not to mention the complexity that we referred to earlier, where the Azov Battalion continue to be funded by your taxpayer dollars. So what is a Nazi really? <laughs> A standing ovation for a Ukrainian veteran of the Second World War. Who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. In a sense, the mathematics, geography and history could have been looked at before the decision to honour that gentleman, who may well have been brave, but it has to be said, was a brave Nazi. And suddenly we're in some very complex moral territory. In an attempt to assume righteous posturing, Nazis are being applauded. Opponents are being shut down for being Nazis. I mean, this is Canada, where the trucker movement were dismissed as Nazis, shut down, their free speech was controlled because they were alleged to be Nazis for no real actual reason and yet a member of the Nazi party has just been celebrated in Parliament. Now obviously this was an error and a mistake but what it shows me and I wonder if you agree with this is there is no actual tethering to values and principles anymore. Language is just used, adjudications are used in order to meet a particular agenda, to control the public sphere, to shut down dissent and opposition. This person is a Nazi, that person's a Nazi but what about these Nazis? We're funding that those Nazis. What about this Nazi? We're applauding that Nazi. What this shows me is there's a kind of nihilism at the core of our culture. Our institutions are falling apart from the inside, observably. And this kind of peculiar moral morass is the observable symptom of a system that has no moral core. Invited by House Speaker Anthony Rota to witness Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's address to Parliament. Yaroslav Hunka is one of his constituents. What an astonishing time it is. This story, just one of the indications of how crazy the world has become. Now, obviously, we can't bring you this evidently contentious content without support from our sponsors. That's why I'm incredibly grateful that Sticker Mule, one of the great sponsors of Stay Free with Russell Brand, are offering these six stunning designs. They're only available in this pack. They're all made with Sticker Mule's Magic Touch. Sticker Mule has 10 thousand of these packs. That's right, 10,000 ready to deliver to your address absolutely free. Just go to stickermule.com forward slash Russell and fill out the form. Thank you Sticker Mule for continuing to support our content in an extraordinary time and thank you Canada for being so extraordinary in the people you're willing to honour. Let's get back into that. He's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, a eh? Nazi hero. The world's getting so complicated. Plainly, this is a ridiculous error, but it's also a window into the hollow, empty rhetoric that passes for politics these days. And this is what happens when nothing means anything anymore. When there's a locked on agenda that has to be pursued and justice can be discarded, meaning can be discarded, rights can be discarded, free speech can be discarded. Suddenly it's plausible that bank accounts can be shut down. People's financial lives, private lives can all be used as pieces on a chest board that always has the same momentum. Centralised authority, shut down debate. That's why you'll notice that any crisis or trauma that's tossed into the machine, whether it's a climate crisis, a health crisis, or an energy crisis, a military crisis, always has the same result. The empowerment and enrichment of an elite and the disempowerment of ordinary people. This paradigm will be repeated endlessly, I predict, until none of us have any power at all. That was the jubilant scene Friday. Now new details have emerged about that war service MPs applauded. Hunka served in the 1st Galician Division, a voluntary unit commanded by the Nazis. The unit is complicit in the Holocaust. They this Jewish human rights campaigner says there's no defending former soldiers like Hunka. You swore allegiance to Hitler and you were involved with the massacre of civilians. Rhoda has now apologized and says he regrets ever inviting him. In retrospect, I shouldn't have invited a Nazi on Yom Kippur. I'm afraid I was very drunk. It seems, I suppose, insensitive is a word. Does that word have any meaning anymore? Does anything mean anything anymore? I recognize an individual in the gallery. I have subsequently become aware of more information which causes me to regret my decision to do so, he says in a statement. 
I accept full responsibility for my actions. Still, the opposition is asking how this could happen. How it happens is no one has any regard for actual values. People care only for spectacle. Just the creation of a spectacle, the creation of some symbols, as long as it's generally moving in the direction of their agenda, they won't question the reality of it. That's how it happens because there's no earthed connection to reality. This is the cultural space that's being created. This is the cultural space that's being controlled. The Prime Minister's office says it wasn't aware the Speaker had invited Hunka, saying in a statement, no advance notice was provided to the Prime Minister's office, nor the Ukrainian delegation, about the invitation or the recognition. And yet they applauded anyway, because they don't have any genuine values, they don't care for the actual truth, they just want to participate in a disempowering spectacle. Obviously it's extremely upsetting that this happened. Uh, the speaker, speaker has uh, acknowledged his mistake uh, and has apologised. Uh, but this is something that is deeply embarrassing to the Parliament of Canada and, by extension, to all Canadians. Uh, I think particularly of Jewish MPs and all members of the Jewish community across the country who are uh, celebrating Yom, or commemorating Yom Kippur today. Uh, I think it's going to be really important that all of us push back against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation. What? Russian propaganda? Russian disinformation? Didn't you just have a Nazi in Parliament and applaud him? Are you suggesting that somehow Putin was involved in that? You don't have to be a Putin apologist, and I'm certainly not one, to recognise that this event is not the fault of Vladimir Putin. This is the fault of a morally empty neoliberal establishment that will use symbols to create a narrative without questioning what they're actually doing, because there's no meaning there. There is no meaning there. Just the service of elite interests and the provision of an apparently convenient narrative that because it's so hollow and vacuous will occasionally involve applauding Nazis on the eve of Yom Kippur because they've got no actual values. And continue our steadfast and unequivocal support for Ukraine uh, as uh, we did last week with announcing uh, further measures to stand with Ukraine in uh, Russia's illegal war against it. Well, as long as the unequivocal support of Ukraine doesn't similarly involve the support of actual Nazis. And again, you don't have to not be supportive of Ukrainian people or sympathetic to their plight or indeed pray for an end to this horrific and unnecessary war to still be able to observe that there is a Nazi battalion being funded by your taxpayer dollars fighting within the Ukrainian army. There is a degree of complexity and nuance which is way beyond the ability of this current system to navigate. Liberal socialists and other progressives often claim that conservatives are in bed with the far right and Nazis. This repulsive term is sometimes used to describe conservatives themselves. Well, that's just not going to work anymore. The political left can thank Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberals for this after they unwittingly honoured a Nazi in Parliament. How on earth did this happen? Anthony Rota, the Speaker of the House, recognised one of his constituents, 98-year-old Yaroslav Hunka, who was honoured during Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's September the 22nd visit. This is because politics is a spectacle now. They realised there's a Ukrainian veteran living in our constituency. Wouldn't it be fantastic to honour this Ukrainian veteran because it will look good and it will feel good, but it won't mean anything except applauding, in this instance, a Nazi. And unless you want to get into the complexity of war, the nature of good and evil, Solzhenitsyn's term that the line between good and evil runs not between nations, continents, races or creeds, but through every human heart, then that looks like an error. And I don't see any willingness to look at Solzhenitsyn's writing and work because he's Russian. Rota depicted Hunka as a Ukrainian-Canadian war veteran from the Second World War who fought for Ukrainian independence against the Russians and also called him a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we all thank him for his service. I mean, that's actually a considerable lack of knowledge of the Second World War where it's commonly understood that Russia, the United States, Britain and others were in alliance against the Nazis. Here's the problem. Hunka served in a unit which was renamed the 1st Ukrainian Division towards the end of the Second World War. That particular division is more well known under its previous names as either the SS Galicia Division or the 14th Waffen Grenadier SS Division. It was a voluntary unit that was under the command of Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany and was accused of murdering innocent Jews and Poles. So it's sort of pretty frontline actual Nazism. This is not the kind of Nazism that is used linguistically to condemn opponents of neoliberalist vacuous politics. This is actual execution of innocent people on the basis of their nationality.
nationality or race. Honka received a standing ovation in the house. It's on the record. It will always be available on YouTube and other video clips. There's no way for the Trudeau Liberals to ever escape it. Rota and his staff clearly had no idea there was a link between the first Ukrainian division and the Nazis before inviting Hunker. Presumably, or they wouldn't have invited him because PR is their business. Honesty and politics isn't. We're going to pause that here on this platform to see it in its entirety. Please click the link in the description and join us on Rumble. If you can become a member of our community, I'd be incredibly grateful to you. We need your support now more than ever. See you there. Stay free.